Hello, I'm Renata Gambino again, and here's some tips for you are designing for online. Physical proximity isn't a precondition for good education. Comparing one form of education to another distracts us from the fact that all forms of education can and should be made better. Therefore, we consider it fundamental to reflect on the possible ways to better our courses, whether they are online or not. The basic principles of collaborative learning are built upon the knowledge uh, that our learning brains are composed of three different networks devoted to recognition, strategy and affection. These three networks are aligned with the three main principles. Recognition to produce representation, strategy to exploit action and affection to fuel engagement. These theoretical principles based on the learning science of the cognitive science and provide a solid foundation for understanding how the learning brain body intersects with effective instruction and are synthesized in a very effective way in the Universal Design for Learning Guidelines. The Universal Design for Learning Guidelines draw from a variety of research, including the field of neuroscience, the learning sciences and cognitive psychology. It is, a deeply root, it is deeply rooted in concepts such as the zone of proximal development, scaffolding mentors and modeling, as well as the foundational of Piaget, Vygotsky, Brunner, Ross and Wood and Bloom, who expose similar principles for understanding individual differences and the pedagogies required for addressing them. The Universal Design for Learning guidelines are a tool used in the implementation of Universal Design for Learning, a framework to improve and optimize teaching and learning for all people based on scientific insights into how humans learn. They have a wonderful web page, uh, which I invite you to uh, have a look on. In order to become familiar with creating an online course or an online module of your course, you have to um, uh, check for some outlines. So you have first to provide a course description and rationale, you have to organize materials to check for videos and different uh, possibilities for learners. You have to declare the course learning outcomes. You have to organize the modules of stu study and provide an assessment guideline. And the assessment guideline must be provided before the course is starting. To do this, first of all, think of uh, thinking modules. Uh, consider how your students' learning experiences can be broken down into a series of modules each with its own topic, purpose, and learning ob objectives, interactive activities, and knowledge checks. Care for multimodality, of course. Students should be able to navigate through each module sequentially in order to build their skills and knowledge and meet learning goals and deadlines for course tasks. Then create a multimodal learning opportunity and because multimodality is very important and prepare therefore different types of learning materials at times that suit their schedules in online and offline modalities. Set also realistic goals for yourself and for your students. Avoid setting unrealistic goals that require excessive training and multi-platform management on your end. So allow students to self-direct their learning within each module while making yourself available during optional pre-scheduled drop-in session using Blackboard, Collaborate, Zoom or other tools. Build an inclusive course, don't forget it, because your students vary in their identities, background, knowledge, language, skill, age, maturity and access to technology. They will respond differently to the presentation of the content of the course. So uh, these are very useful guidelines, but there are um, more um, ideas that uh, are useful to define the quality of the course. So we have made a quality checklist with some interesting points. 
So we claim that a good online course is informed by issues of equity, justice and correctness. Uh, it takes into account social, political and cultural issues, including students' backgrounds and socioeconomic circumstances to craft a learning experience that is just. A good online course is interactive. A good online course provides information such as reading or lectures, videos, but also involves interactions between professors and students and between students and students. And it is engaging and challenging. It invites students to participate, motivates them to contribute and captures their interest and attention. It capitalizes on the joy of learning and challenges students to enhance their skills, abilities and knowledge. And so a good online course is cognitively challenging. It is also involves in practice um, because students must be engaged in doing, not just watching and reading and doing again and in applying what they have learned. A good online course is effective. Such a course identifies the skills, abilities, and knowledge that students will gain by the end of it and provides activities developed to acquire them and assesses whether students were successful or not. It includes also an instructor who is visible and active and who exhibits care, empathy, and trust for students. Um, it must be he must he or she must be approachable and responsive and um, must work with students to address problems and concerns in the moment that they arise a good online course promotes students agency it gives students autonomy to enable opportunities for relevant and meaningful learning and such a course redistributes power to the extent that is possible within the group in uh, in the end, uh, a good online course cares for feedback and uh, good feedbacks uh, are very important to improve the further development of the course. These are very uh, useful guidelines, but there are also um, rules uh, and given by an official framework. And this um, is a framework um, made by the European Council and has uh, recommendations for a sustainable competitiveness um, uh, regarding education and training. Um, and respectful of social fairness and resilience. And in order to fulfill the objective of the European education area in developing a genuine European learning space with high quality and inclusive education and training, this um, documents gives a series of quality descriptors. These quality descriptors have been summarized by us in these uh, four principles. Uh, which mostly are the same as those given before, but these are the formal ones. So planning must reflect a, strate a strategy and must include explicit goals, objectives, actions and indicators. Uh, it must um, have an impl implementation plan and the resources uh, must be appropriately aligned and assigned with a view to achieving the target set in the impl implementation plan and relevant and inclusive partnerships, uh, including those between teachers and trainers, are explicitly supported to implement the actions planned. Uh, another principle given is that the evaluation of outcomes and processes must be regularly carried out and supported by measurements and that procedures of feedback and review are part of a strategic learning process in the organization uh, and must be uh, used to support the development of high quality provision and improve opportunities for learners. These principles are all in this document that you can find at the link you find here on the right hand side. If you are interested uh, to go more in deep in these quality assessment procedures, um, here a short bibliography to get into the um, problem or into these uh, assessment criteria. This is all for this moment and I hope you enjoyed and thank you for your attention.